I somehow need to make several parts that are borderline impossible to make in this little woodwork shop. But that should never dissuade you from doing it anyway. This is already part 6 of my unipolar 3D printer build series, which means we are going to build the Z-axis linear motion system to haul this heavy-ass X-axis up and down the Z-rails at our microcontroller's whim. Because it is pretty difficult to find two identical stepper motors in some e-waste, unless you take apart two of the literally same device model, my two Z-axis lead screws need to be driven by a single motor, which unfortunately results in the linear drive system being the most unpleasantly complex assembly of the entire 3D printer. As soon as you add a timing belt, you suddenly end up with like a million additional parts for belt tensioning and that sort of stuff, and although this probably could have been simplified a great deal, I just don't have enough headroom underneath the printer, so I'm kinda stuck with this now. But oh well, to get started we need to take off the Z-axis to drill holes for an arbor and some bearings into these MDF spacers. Okay, so these are the bearings I'm going to use. They were cheap and therefore aren't quite up to the quality standards I've come to expect. Look, the ID is over a tenth of a millimeter too large. That's why I'm using them on this project where quality arguably isn't the focus and the ID doesn't matter. Either way, they are 19 millimeters in diameter and since I don't have a 19 millimeter Forstner bit, aside from it being literally impossible to drill a hole without having it wander off into the great unknown, I deliberately made these spacer blocks out of 19mm MDF so that I can cut a notch for the bearings out of them and have the bearings sandwiched by the Z and Y axis rails. This allows me to use the table saw, which is the most accurate and repeatable manufacturing technique I currently have access to, and the only way to make sure the lead screws won't end up sitting in these blocks all askew. Now, what most people would probably do in this scenario is screw the bearings onto the old thread with a few nuts, stick it in, and be done with it. But I won't do that for two reasons. A, the diameter of threaded rod is never actually quite its nominal diameter. It's always a little undersized. So even if the bore in our bearings wasn't oversized, there would still be a little wiggle room between the bearing and the threads. If you then tighten down the nuts, your threaded rod will almost certainly not end up concentric with the bearing, which will introduce runout if you spin it. And as you can probably imagine, runout on a lead screw is bad. It might as well be bent for that matter. Reason B is optional because reason A exists. Basically those one foot long pieces of threaded rod I'm going to use are too short to reach the top of the Z axis if I waste two and a half inches down here to mount the bearings. So the complicated solution I came up with is to turn a custom arbor with sections for the bearings to press fit onto, as well as a threaded portion here to connect to the old thread. And of course I'm doing that without a lathe. I found a piece of crap metal, which incidentally used to be the switch lever of an electric lawnmower, and it's barely thicker than the ID of the bearings, so I don't have to remove much material to get it to fit. Man, every time I do this, it really makes me want to get a lathe, but machining is just way too expensive for me to get into right now. But there's the two arbors, they ended up very nice, and things are even mostly as precise as they're supposed to be. The bearings should be a light press fit onto here. Speaking of bearings, those are actually way worse than I thought. Check out what happens if I spin this shaft. I think. Appalling is not strong enough of a word to describe this. It's just horrendous. Those bearings are levels of crooked beyond what even I would consider unusable and best sent to scrap. If I had a say in what bearings happen to be in my drawer right now, I would not be using this junk. 
but it's the only six millimeter bearings I have, so on we go. Now I just need to cut some threads on this end. What a shame threading destroyed the beautiful black finish. Well, that's not promising. I just talked about runout being a bad thing on lead screws, and yet there's a dangerous amount of wobble on that threaded portion. It's even worse on that little pin that the pulley gets attached to. Seems like the hole in these bearings isn't even centered. Nice. Anyway, disregarding all the red flags, now I need some pulleys to put on those wobbly arbors. And while any normal person would have simply bought three of these, after all, they're only a few cents each, I want to 3D print my own pulleys, which means I'll need a temporary solution until I get this printer up and running. And now that I think about it, it's not actually that bad of an idea, because if I make a wobbly pulley, I can compensate for the wobbly arbor. However, not so good news is, a pulley would ideally be made on a CNC router, which I don't have. So... If these pulleys haven't earned your subscription, I don't know what will. Though to be honest, I probably did that primarily to flex my woodworking skills. Right, I'm running into a bit of a problem here. My original plan was to join the lead screw onto the threaded side of the arbor using these coupler nuts like so. But one of the threads seemingly having gone on slightly askew to begin with, in addition to those awful eccentric bearings, result in the lead screw not even being aligned with the axis of rotation at all. Plus, we're getting a huge amount of run out here at the root. I wanted to deal with that another time and just ignore it for today, but that's just not going to work, is it? 
Even worse is the fact that this connection with the coupler nut constantly unscrews at the lightest touch, which wouldn't be so handy during printing. I really didn't give that too much thought, did I? The easiest way I know of to fix this right now is to spin the arbor on those very bearings, just like we did for the pulleys, and grind away the thread until we get the shaft to actually run true. Did the same thing with my lead screws, turned them into a makeshift lathe using decent quality bearings, and ground this little smooth section on them. Now I can use a piece of this plastic tube from a soap dispenser or whatever was in it pump to connect them to my arbor, just like so. Another huge advantage of this approach is, the plastic tube is slightly flexible, just like those aluminum coupler thingies people always use to connect stepper motors to lead screws. Of course, that could introduce slipping, since the tube is really just a light press fit on there, but I guess we'll find that out soon enough. But for now, we can finally start putting some things back together again, which in itself is a little annoying, cause everything needs to be properly lined up again, made sure it's square, and that sort of stuff. This white stuff, by the way, is masking tape. If you remember, the MDF is marginally thicker than 19mm, which means I need to shim the difference to stop the bearing from moving laterally. Also, good to know, the timing belt won't fall out on its own. I positively need to coerce it in there. What I'm doing here is really just rough checking to make sure things are more or less straight. Perpendicularity of all axes will need to be completely overhauled and dialed in with a dial indicator once I get this thing printing. The next step will be mounting the stepper and making the belt tensioning mechanism. I plan to have these two spring-loaded rollers pushing the timing belt onto the pulley, forcing it to mesh, and then sliding the motor left or right to take any slack out of the belt. But now trying this out in real life, it turns out the timing belt is slightly too long, and I can't slide the motor down far enough before hitting these cross members. That discrepancy is because I couldn't be bothered to measure and then model the exact length of the timing belt in CAD. You could say it's sloppy design, I agree, but I didn't want to waste my time on irrelevant details. This design with the spring-loaded rollers inside these sheet metal shells is insanely hard to make anyway, so I'm just going to replace it with something much simpler on the fly. The motor is now going to be stationary on this piece of 3mm HDF, which for simplicity's sake I'm just gluing to the cross members. I also took a few millimeters off the wider one, so now the belt has enough clearance so as not to rub against it, because earlier it was a little too close for my liking. By the way, this stepper motor is unipolar, does 48 steps per revolution, and has 30 ohms coil resistance. Ladder being a bad thing, ideally you'd want it to be lower, but 48 steps per revolution on a lead screw with a 0.8mm pitch will result in a full step resolution of roughly 1.6 hundredths of a millimeter, which should be enough. For the belt tensioner, we're going to use another two of those same tiny bearings we also use on the linear rails. They're terrible quality as well, and I already changed my mind about using them on the laser cutter, so we can use as many as we want on the 3D printer. I literally got 50 of these bearings for $6.81. That is how good they are.
Well, that was super easy. No idea why I didn't do it like that straight away. Probably because it's kind of crude. But it works just fine, and that's all that matters. Let's try it out under its own power. Here I have an Arduino with a ULN2003 Darlington driver, and a simple sketch, link will be in the description, to control unipolar stepper motors like this one, bidirectionally via a potentiometer. Here we go. Yeah, so this stepper motor, even though it looks nice and chunky, is basically the same crap as the X and Y axis ones. It doesn't seem to have much more torque at all, and for some reason the maximum speed before it starts skipping steps is ridiculously low. Like, even without the added friction of the transmission I just built, it doesn't go much faster than this. And at this speed, it has basically no torque. I can easily stall it by just pushing against the 3.5mm side of the arbor. One thing's for sure, in exchange for using literally the crappiest of pretty much everything, this printer is going to be excruciatingly slow. I honestly don't know what the hell came over me when I decided to build a 3D printer with this absolute trash called stepper motors. But I said I was going to build a 3D printer using these motors, and I will do everything in my power to follow through on that promise and put my engineering skills where my mouth is. Somewhere I read using unipolar steppers in a bipolar configuration increases the torque because all of the winding is active at any given time as opposed to only half of it, so that'll probably help. And on top of that, I'm thinking about supplying these motors with 19.5 volts instead of 12 to push the absolute maximum of current through them I can without frying them. Even if they do burn out, it's no big deal. I'll just take them apart and rewind them with a shorter length of thicker wire, which will result in a more desirable, much lower resistance. Anyway, as seems to be the common theme with this project, let's cross that bridge when we actually get to it. For now, we've only got mounting the lead screws left to do, and then we're basically done with the Z-axis motorization. Like I said, I'm cutting some pieces of this plastic tube from an old soap dispenser pump to press fit on the arbors. But why am I sticking these slightly corroded ball bearings inside the tube? By the way, isn't it weird? This is a ball bearing. But these are called ball bearings too. Like, who came up with that? Couldn't these just be steel balls? But I digress. I already touted the advantage of the tube being slightly flexible, though for obvious reasons I don't trust it to take the entire weight of the gantry. However, if I butt the ends of the shafts up against each other to transfer the load directly, there won't be any flexing possible anymore, so I put the steel balls as spacers to allow for some flexing while the arbor bears the brunt directly. An unforeseen problem has arised. Even though my CAD model told me it would be fine, I for some reason don't get enough clearance between the threaded rod and the Z-carriage. It rubs! Great. Well, I would have had to take it apart regardless, so let's just cut a relief. Some people might be scandalized by the way I'm going to attach to the upper end of the lead screws. See this little stud I ground onto the threaded rod? Well, I cut these brackets out of some scrap sheet metal from an old printer, and I'm simply gonna drill a hole into them and stick them on there like so to prevent the lead screw from wobbling around. The hole I just drilled is also deliberately a little oversized, since it stands to reason we don't need to worry about alignment as much if the thing can just go where it wants to. Because technically, this part isn't even really needed, and its only function is to prevent this.
Last, but certainly not least, we need some lead screw nuts to put on our carriages in order to move them up and down. And while I fantasized about simply tapping a hole in a piece of hardwood, which would have been by far the easiest solution, I think with as little torque as this stepper motor provides at pretty much anything other than a total standstill, we all need a lower friction solution. Fortunately, I found some brass nuts in my collection, and because all of the weight of the Z carriage rests on these nuts at all times, thanks to gravity, we don't even need any fancy zero backlash modifications. A run-of-the-mill nut should do just fine. Now, I should mention, ideally you'd use brass coupler nuts, but brass anything is so hard to get nowadays, I only have these normal nuts because they were in something I took apart. You literally can't buy brass nuts in a hardware store, at least none that I've seen. Additionally, longer nuts come with their own set of alignment issues. They have to be exactly in line with the lead screws, otherwise they bind. And since I just did my best trying to avoid having to get two linear rails and two lead screws parallel within a few hundredths of a millimeter, I don't need two more objects to align and pitch and yaw on top of X and Y. Well, there we finally are. It's always impressive and uniquely satisfying to see a mechanical system in action if you literally made almost all the parts for it yourself by hand. Like those frickin' arbors and wooden pulleys. It really gives you a healthy dose of respect for the actual complexity of even rudimentary mechanical contraptions like this timing belt setup. And yeah, this is about maximum speed right there. It'll definitely suck during homing of the machine. While it's printing, however, this is a perfectly acceptable speed. The Z-axis only ever does those 02 millimeter increments to get to the next layer, which only requires a quarter turn of the stepper motor and should be doable in under a second. Much more annoying will be when I eventually convert the X and Y axes to lead screw as well. Even though I expect they'll be almost twice as fast as this, it'll still make for a very slow 3D printer. But hey, either you get to use trashy motors, or you have a fast printer. Can't have everything. I am so glad this video is finally done. It was a monumental effort to get this much done in just two weeks. Like, I haven't really had the time to do anything other than eating, sleeping, filming, and editing this video. It would be really nice if you made sure you're subscribed. Maybe share the video with some friends. Since there was no sponsorship on this one, it would really help out the channel. I've also got a Patreon for those who want 
and are able to chip in monetarily. As a member, you get early video access and extra content and stuff. Hope you enjoyed! Bye-bye!